And it gets really complicated in this regard because what a lot of people don't address is, so DHT, dihydrotestosterone, mentioned earlier how it's like the primary hormone that will determine if you reach full maturity in adolescence. Like it will still be markedly male probably if you have adequate testosterone production, but you won't get full maturation if you have, you know, zero DHT from a defect in the enzyme that encodes for 5-alpha reductase or something. But that hormone, the most androgenic hormone in the body that essentially determines if you fully masculinize or not, or you end up, you know, with a micro penis, that has a much higher binding affinity for SHBG than testosterone does. And then testosterone has a much higher binding affinity for SHBG than estrogen does. So even though on paper, we're talking about the importance of free test versus total test, which is very important, also very important, which most people aren't going to test in their blood is the DHT level that males will rely on through adolescence and to some extent in adulthood, potentially, depending on their test levels, that is going to get gobbed up even more proportionally by SHBG. So if you have high SHBG, not only is your free test potentially inadequate, despite adequate testosterone production, proportionally, your free DHT, which is like the main androgenic hormone is like way more gobbed up. And this gets really rough in females because they, a lot of them are using things like combined oral contraceptives, which crank SHBG through the roof, through the liver uh, interaction with the oral combined oral contraceptive pills, depending on which drug they're using. In general, ethanol estradiol plus some progestin, depending on how androgenic the progestin is, it'll depend on how much the SHBG goes up. But you'll see in it, uh, Adolescent women or women who are, you know, in full adulthood that are taking combined oral contraceptives, their total testosterone will suppress upwards of 50 to 60 percent and free testosterone upwards of like 70 to 80 percent. So they're walking around like borderline asexual castrated by a pill, essentially. And that's only with the oral. That's with oral, but like any sort of progestin that is synthetic will have negative feedback to some degree all but much lesser so via a localized IUD releasing a levonorgestrel or something. And you're not having to take that supporting estradiol that comes compounded into it. So it depends on the format, but a lot of girls are still using the combined pill. So it's just worth noting nonetheless that when these SHBG levels are skyrocketed or even like high on, you know, a clinical reference range, if you are somebody who is like moderate, you know, T production or low normal or whatever, like the proportional hit to your DHT getting gobbed up could be like the differential between you being symptomatic versus not, as well as your free T. 